Preauricular sinus has also got many synonyms like preauricular pit or fistula or preauricular tract or helical fistula or preauricular cyst. Now to understand the formation of preauricular sinus it becomes very important to know the development of the pinna because it is a developmental disorder or a congenital anomaly. There are six pharyngeal arches right and out of six pharyngeal arches, first and second pharyngeal arches are very important for the development of the ear. Let's suppose these are the arches. So these are the individual arches, first, second and third arches. And the depression between first and second arch on the outside, like this one, is called the first pharyngeal cleft. This is a lateral view of the pharyngeal arch and this is the frontal view of the pharyngeal arch. And the depression from the inside is called the pharyngeal pouch, right? So this, on this lateral view, this is something like this. So out of first and second pharyngeal arches, the, there is development of axons of a lock, three from each arches. So three axons of a lock develop from the first pharyngeal arch, the caudal border of the first pharyngeal arch, and three from the cephalic border of the second pharyngeal arches. And these axons of a lock fuse with each other and they ultimately form the pinna. So tragus is almost formed by the first axon of a lock and the ascending crux of the helix is formed by the second and third axon of a lock. So this forms the basis of formation of preauricular sinus. So if those axons of hillock fails to fuse, right, they leave a preauricular sinus. So it's a developmental defect of first and second pharyngeal arches. And this shouldn't be confused with the branchial cleft anomalies. If there is first branchial cleft anomaly, it would extend from say angle of mandible to the external auditory canal. But these preauricular sinus are not related with the external auditory canal. However, they go inside, they go in the direction of the external auditory canal. And these are also not intimately related with the facial nerve, but there are high chances that you will hit the facial nerve while excising the tract. So this is the difference between preauricular sinus and the branchial cleft anomaly, right? There are many association like Beckwith, Widman syndrome or Branchioautorenal syndrome or trisomy 22. Right. So if a child presents to you with the preauricular sinus, you have to do cross examination and rule out other syndromes right, and other abnormalities. What are the sites where you can find preauricular sinus? First one is the anterior margin of the ascending crux of helix. You can also find in the upper portion of the helix or in the anti helix or in the lobules or behind the ear. But the most common is the anterior margin of the ascending crux of the helix. Clinical features are asymptomatic unless the tract is infected or if there is pus discharge, right? So what are our investigation which you'll order? Since as I said, there are high chances of renal abnormalities the, the child might have. But at the same time, it's not feasible for you to uh, do ultrasound examination of every child with presence to you with preauricular sinus. So if you find any of the three factors, like if there is presence of another malformation or if there is family history of deafness or maternal history of gestational diabetes so or any other suspicious factor you may send the child for ultrasound examination of the abdomen and rule out any other abnormalities right of course you'll do pure tone audiometry to rule out any hearing defects how will you treat if it is asymptomatic you could leave if it is infected you'll advise coamoxiclave for seven days an anti staphylococcal ointment because staphylococcus is the most common agent which is infecting the preauricular sinus. If there is persistent discharge, you'll do drainage and excision of the fistulous tract, right, with the Gensma technique or supraauricular approach. Supraauricular approach is more radical technique where you extend the incision behind the ear, also, right. So, these are two techniques how you can excise the tract.